Hi, YouTubers. Jeff Cote here with another session of Ask PYS. We've got a fellow boater asking a question about um, batteries, trays, and battery boxes. So the question is, Jeff, I've watched several of your PYS YouTube videos, thank you, in which you detail the need for a battery, either tray or box, depending. Also about, you mentioned about properly securing the box and methods. Can you tell a little bit more about this, especially in regards to spilling battery acid? Okay, good question. So this is probably one of the most dis concerning um, faux pas, big word here, uh, that installers or do-it-yourselves uh, make on boats. And that is installing batteries, especially flooded lead acid batteries, so batteries that could leak, right? Either they're gonna leak because they're being overcharged, they're gonna leak because as they age, when we charge them, they sort of basically vent electrolyte through the vent caps and or they crack, right? Battery, I've seen batteries crack uh, because of maybe cold temperature. When you have a flooded lead acid battery, it's absolutely essential, okay? And you can forego this advice, but you will suffer the consequences. It's just a matter of, matter of time. You wanna make sure that the battery is in a liquid tight container. Unfortunately, a lot of these battery boxes that we buy from battery suppliers don't come with a manual. There are no instructions. You're simply buying a battery box. You get this battery box and you're thinking, oh, it must be like Ikea. They must have given me everything I need to install this battery box. No, of course not, because it's a boat and it's not easy. You want easy, I tell this all the time, rent a hotel room, go on a trip, all inclusive. Boating is not easy. So you got a battery box, but a lot of boaters are seeing those battery boxes and they have no idea of how to stop it from moving. So what do they do? They drill holes from within, right? And they defeat the very purpose of buying the box. But they don't know that because the battery box doesn't come with a manual. So it's not their fault, they just haven't been informed. So this is me sharing with you the pain that I've seen other boaters go through. So when you buy a battery box, you gotta make sure that it's absolutely liquid type if you have a flood lead acid battery. So you're gonna actually hold the battery from the outside and you're gonna stop that battery box from moving. You're gonna make sure it doesn't go up and down, but you cannot fasten it from within the battery box because that compromises the battery box. So that's the first thing. And you do that with flooded lead acid batteries. Now, what about seal valve regulated lead acid batteries? Five big words, seal valve regulated, SVR. And what are the examples of that? AGM, absorbed glass mat, or gel? AGM and gel batteries do not have a liquid electrolyte. The electrolyte is either in a gel format or an absorbed glass mat. Those batteries can't leak. You could literally saw them in half, you could drill a hole in them, doesn't matter, there's no, gonna be no leaking of electrolyte. Question is, should I have a battery box with those batteries too? Well, if you can fit a battery box, it's a good idea because what you're doing is you're putting a top, a lid on top. Now, the battery will never leak and you could actually screw inside because it doesn't matter. There's never gonna be any electrolyte sloshing in there. But a battery box is good because it keeps all those positive terminals on top of the battery protected from an accidental short. And that's something that we as boaters always have to worry about is that nobody ever gets complacent and sees a positive and negative post on a battery and for inadvertently puts a metal like a, it could be a prawn trap, it could be a tool, it could be anything that's metallic and conductive on top of a battery. So that would be a good reason why you would put a battery box with an AGM battery or a gel battery. Now, in some instances, battery box can't fit in. And so if a battery box can fit in and it's an AGM battery, then make sure you use protective boots on top of the positive post and also even on top of the negative post. Because yes, if half of it is there, then you shouldn't worry, but might as well cover both the negative and the positive post so that you can never have an accidental short. So battery boxes are a good idea if you can fit them in. You have to have one if it's lead acid battery, flooded. If it's not a flooded lead acid and it's a seal valve regulated battery, either gel or AGM, then you can have it in a box, which is preferable. It doesn't have to be liquid proof, it's okay, but it's really nice to have a lid because over time, people tend to forget that batteries are good, but also very dangerous. So great question. And if you've got battery boxes on your boat, Look, and if you're asking yourself, how is this battery box magically held in place? Unfortunately, someone probably actually fastened it from within. 
and you'll have to replace the battery box and do it all over again. Remember, rule number one, it's never easy. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, ask them down below or go on our website to fill one of the forms. Also, support to keep this YouTube channel ad-free by donating on PayPal or purchasing some merchandise on our store. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.